everyone, my name is Pablo Munoz Gomez. I'm a 3D concept and character artist, and I love using ZBrush. So I'm going to show you a few different features from ZBrush 2021.7 update and how I've been using it in my workflow and to create a specific objects. So I have a character here that I've been working on. And the, for the first tip, I'm going to show you how I approach the, you know, the sculpting and the modeling of a plate or like this armor plate here for the belly of this character, right? So um, it is pretty easy, pretty easy and with the new tools, it's just a, a fantastic workflow. So you can follow along if you want to. So what I'm going to do is set everything to the lowest resolution with the all low button so that it's a little bit easier to, to work on this character because it has uh, plenty of uh, points. It has 38 million polygons. So I'm going to go ahead and go into solo mode and holding control and shift to isolate this piece, invert the selection. I'm just going to hide some of the pieces that make up that that piece, right? That make that part. There we go. All right. So I just hit it, but it's still there. I, the idea is just to recreate it with the new tools. So the first tool that I want to show you is the geometry stager. This one right here. So if you go to the geometry palette and open up the stager, these are the, the new features that I want to show you. Um, in my opinion, this is one of the best uh, features to, to enhance the workflows for many reasons. So one of the reasons is that you can work on a pose character, let's say, or a more dynamic pose, and at the same time retain the ability to edit that mesh in the center of the world, which is fantastic. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So for that piece, I'm going to go ahead and append a sphere. Right, and I'm going to select it, enable polyframe, so that you can see this is kind of like a dynamic sphere. And I'm going to turn off perspective and go into solo mode. Right, so this is just a sphere to to start the blocking process of that, uh, yeah, of that belly area of the mesh. So the first thing I want to do is obviously cut it in half, and for that I'm going to use another tool from Series 2021.7, holding Control and Shift to access these, um, these brushes right here. I'm going to click on the knife curve, which allows you to basically cut through the model. Right? So I'm going to hold Control and Shift and do that. And that essentially you know, cuts the, the, the sphere, is sphere in half, and you end up with some um, nice topology here at the bottom. I'm going to also bring in the Gizmo 3D center. Uh, by the way, let's turn off symmetry. Click on this location icon to center it. And I'm going to flatten it just a tiny bit. Right, And now I can go ahead and use the new feature. So let's scroll down to geometry and I'm going to click on home stage. So the home stage switch allows you to set a, you know, the current state of the model, which is set in the center of the world. If I turn on the floor, you see this is right in the middle, right? And that's the home stage of that object. And now we can go ahead and bring back everything, bring in the gizmo and we can start placing this. And uh, let me just hide the, the sword of this character. and just position this in an area where you want to have it, right? So this is what I was saying that if you're working on a more dynamic pose, you don't necessarily have to rely on a, an A pose or a T pose. You can have a very dynamic pose and start adding your, you know, your pieces, like, you know, all of these plating and, and armor of this character. But um, using this feature allows you to go back to the center of the world, which is fantastic. So now that I have placed this area or this mesh in this area, I can go ahead and click on target stage here on the stager. So all that does is allow me to switch between the home stage and the target stage, right? So the home stage is where we are originally brought in that sphere and we cut it in half and we squ squash it a little bit. And the target stage is where it's going to be in the character. So the asset in the character. So what's really good about this thing is, or about this process is that you can switch to the home stage, let's go into solo mode, and use something like the radial symmetry. So I'm going to go to the transform palette, enable symmetry, uh, set up the symmetry in the Y axis, because that's the, the one, the, the green arrow, basically, and enable radial symmetry. I'm going to leave it as a count of eight. I'm going to turn off the floor as well. And I can start doing um, you know, a bunch of different things, right? So maybe to do the, the ornaments, I can do something like that. And because this is on the center of the world, we can take advantage of that radial symmetry, right? Another tool from Zbrush 2021.7, uh, again, it's one of the, the best features as well, is the adjust last that allows you to adjust the last, um, the last stroke that you did. And it works with the radial symmetry as well. So that single swirly stroke that I did, I can go to this adjust last and change the intensity just by doing that. You can actually go into negative values if you want to push that in as well. But I think I'm going to keep it simple and just add a little bit more of a intensity in there. And you can combine these with other tools. So for example, you can click on 
let's go for pinch, for example. Um, let's filter by letter P and I to pinch. So I'm going to pinch the center of this line just to sharpen the details and then go to the adjust last and sharpen this even more, right? You can control the levels, the level of sharpness of these details, right? And if I enable polyframe, you'll see this is still a dynamic object. So what I can do is um, increase the amount of resolution and then do something like a clay polish. So that just, you know, to polish that, that piece. So let's go to dynamic. I'm going to increase the resolution to 462, hold control, click and drag. So now that gives me almost 400,000 polygons. You see, it's a lot higher in terms of the resolution. And I can go to the clay polish, click that big button a couple of times maybe, just to refine that. And because we still have the ability to use the, the radial symmetry, I can use the smooth brush to polish this even further, right? Right, so that's how I created those details. Now. Remember, I've been using the radial symmetry. I also redynamized the whole thing. Um, and let's go ahead and do something even more interesting. I'm going to bring in something like the IMM parts. And I'm just going to click on this bolt 9 and basically click and drag to add this piece and bring in the gizmo, maybe adjust the placement. Um, we can also, in the transform palette, enable local so that we can scale that in the local axis of these uh, bits and pieces. Push that in a little bit. And let's say that I'm not happy with this bolt. I can now use the arrow keys on my keyboard to essentially go through different bolts uh, to decide which one I want to use for this. So um, let's, let's keep it simple. Let's use that one. Let's go back and remove that mask. Let's go back to the move brush. So um, just as a quick recap, we have done uh, a redynamish to a higher resolution. We have used the adjust last. Um, we have included IMM brushes into that piece, all of that making use of that home stage that I originally set up with the geometry palette here, right? So if I go out of solo mode, this is what we have, right? And we have the radial symmetry. Let's turn that off for now. And now I can click on switch stage and see is going to take everything that we have done, you know, changing the geometry with Dynamesh, adding IMM brushes, anything that we do in that home stage, and it's going to send it back to that target stage where, which, you know, is what we use to pose the model. Um, you can go ahead and continue the refinement process in this area. So let's say if I want to add maybe uh, something here in the middle, let's do that with the same IMM brush, Bolt 8. I'm going to click and drag and just leave it there, clear the mask. And now we have this piece that we can also see in the home stage, right? And in this home stage, what I can do is hold control and shift because that has a different polygroup. I can mask that, bring back everything, maybe invert the mask, bring in the gizmo, center it to that piece, reset the location, uh, the rotation, sorry, holding the Alt key. And let's go ahead and reset the entire rotation of this, this guy. And, you know, we can replace or reposition this in a better way, you know, all within the, the home stage, clear that mask, go back from solo, switch to that stage, and we have all those changes made. So this is a fantastic tool that can speed up the workflow, um, you know, <laughs> to, the, to another level. Um, all of these pieces that you see here in this character were set up in the same fashion. So I will set them up in their home stage so that I can um, edit and use the symmetry, radial symmetry or anything like that. And then the, um, the target stage is where they were placed in the character. So hopefully you have found this useful and I'll see you in the next tip.